Hey guys, today we are back with episode number 22 of Truck History. On this episode, we will be sailing across the sea to Sweden and sweeping through the successful history of Scania trucks. But before we get started, this video was made possible by our online chrome shop, jackschromeshop.com. Be sure to stop by the site and sweep through our selection of sales, including 10% off bumpers, visors, exhaust, steering wheels, and so much more. And remember, folks, if your rig don't shine, you don't know Jack. The story of Scania trucks starts as early as 1900, with the company's humble beginnings as a bicycle manufacturer. After varied success building a variety of vehicles throughout the early 1900s, in 1910, Scania successfully started constructing reliable rigs, which allowed the company to add on to their business by buying another vehicle manufacturer called Vabus, who at the time was on the edge of extinction. Following the merging of these two Swedish manufacturers in 1911, the newly created AB Scania Vabus company began building high-class luxury cars, capable of crushing the countless inexpensive imported cars sweeping the streets of Sweden at the time. Included in the introduction of these innovative vehicles was the CLB slash CLC car in 1911, followed by the subsequent DLA and FLA series that same year with the launch of the latter ELA a little later on the next year in 1912. Unfortunately, these lavish luxury car creations couldn't cultivate many sales before the sudden outbreak of World War I in 1914. Following the First World War in 1919, Scania, like many other manufacturers after the war, made the decision to focus fully on truck production. However, they were hurt heavily by the highly saturated manufacturing market, swamped with a slew of ex-military makes and models. By 1921, the company had become bankrupt, and after some severe economic struggles, new capital came from Stockholm and Skilda Bank, allowing Scania a second chance at becoming a solid, high-standing company. After the company's reconstruction in the early 20s, Scania started to see efforts emphasizing a standard truck setup. This led to the launch of Scania's sporty new 325 medium-duty model, which made its debut in 1925. Also that same year, Scania saw a slightly smaller 314 model make its way onto the market, and together the two trucks took on more modern means. After only three short years, in 1928, Scania started offering another option for their standard 325 truck, this time with a six-cylinder engine under the new 324 nameplate. After another three years in 1931, Scania started working on a slightly larger, heavier-duty version of their standard truck series with the launch of the 335 model. The next year in 1932, Scania saw their very first forward control truck, the 345, featuring a four-cylinder engine that boasted a brand new nickname known as the Bulldog. Subsequent to the success of the beloved Bulldogs, one year later in 1933, Scania launched their first long hauler, the 355 model, which, sadly, saw far fewer sales despite its additional axle. Skipping ahead to the start of the Second World War in 1939, the beloved Bulldogs were unfortunately left behind in favor of making a variety of military vehicles for the Swedish armed forces, including Stridsvon M41 light tanks, which were launched under license. Once the war was almost over, Scania opened up their operations once again and began building the L-10 truck which was introduced in 1944 as the first left-hand drive Scania Vabus vehicle. Only two years later in 1946, the larger L-20 launched with a six-cylinder engine 
and offered an optional trailing axle capable of carrying capacities of over 10 tons. After long perfecting their petrol or diesel engine design, Scania finally debuted a direct-injected diesel engine at the end of 1949 in collaboration with another truck company called Leyland Motors. With the new engine came a new name for the trucks, now known as the four-cylinder L40 and the six-cylinder L60. The trucks in total remained largely unchanged, with the models mostly only seeing minor tweaks through the early 50s. However, in the spring of 1953, Scania launched larger displacement engines, which also saw the switch to their L51 Drabant trucks. Presented as the first Scania Vabus truck to have a proper name, the L51 promoted payload capacities of 5 to 6 tons and featured four-cylinder engines. The following spring in 1954, the final development of Scania's six-cylinder engines with larger displacements were launched. This time, the trucks took on new names as the L71 Regent and also received air braking systems, which would later be followed in 1955 with another fancy new feature, power steering. Towards the end of the 50s decade in 1958, Scania introduced a new generation of trucks with freshly designed six-cylinder engines, stronger chassis components, and a more spacious, comfortable cab. The first of these fancy new freight haulers was the largest model launched, the L75, followed by the slightly smaller L55 the next summer in 1959. The 1960s saw Scania Vabus venturing into overseas production operations, with Brazil becoming the first to establish an abroad Scania facility. The 60s also saw several additions to the all-new line of trucks launched towards the latter end of the 50s, including the much-improved L56 introduced in 1962 and subsequent sister L66 and L76 trucks seen later in 1963. When the L76 models were introduced, an additional forward control cab over version was also released, known as the LB76. The next year of 1964 took a turn with the introduction of the turbocharged L36 truck, which was made as a smaller sized, medium duty model with four cylinders. Speaking of taking a turn in trucks, Scania continued to change their company four years later in 1968 when they officially dropped their Vabus nomenclature, leaving them with the name we know today as Scania. In addition to this newly shortened name, came the launch of a newly named line to take over for the trucks produced prior under the Scania Vabus venture. This truck lineup included the Model 50, the Model 80, the Model 85, the Model 110, and last but not least, the Model 140. Ironically, the next year in 1969, the manufacturer made the decision to merge with Saab AB, forming the Saab Scania subsidiary. Jumping ahead to 1974, another round of rigs were released as updates to the previously produced lineup, including the all-new and advanced Model 81, the Model 86, the Model 111, and finally the Model 141. Also, two years later in 1976, an additional Argentinian complex was created for increased production purposes. And finally, in December of that same year, the L111 truck became the first Scania model made in Argentina. As the new era of the 1980s rolled around, Scania saw the launch of the GPRT range, later known as the Scania 2 Series trucks, which were initially introduced in 1980 in a vast variety of engine sizes and power ratings. After these two series saw soaring success in the Swedish market, Scania subsequently started selling the two series also in Argentina as part of the Scania program. In mid-1985, Scania entered the US market for the first time, exporting a modest 200 models in the year 1987. 1987 also saw the Scania 3 Series range release 
as a successor to the super popular 2 Series produced prior. Similar to its sister 2 Series trucks, the 3 Series came in a complete range of rigs. However, several changes including a freshly redesigned front fascia and completely reconstructed bumper allowed for a lower drag grill design and full headlight bezels, as well as improved wind deflecting designs. Eight years after Scania released their 3 Series range of rigs, in 1995, the 4 Series found its way onto the market and forever changed the famous Scania front fascia from the well-known square shape to a newly redesigned round-shaped rig with curves and contours allowing for advanced aerodynamic abilities. The success of these 4 Series semis saw Scania's sales skyrocket and attracted more and more manufacturers who wanted to stake their claims in the Scania company. Four years later in August of 1999, it was announced that Volvo had agreed to acquire almost half stake in Scania. Although this merger failed miserably, due to the disapproval of the European Union, who made note that the merging of the two manufacturers would make one company have almost all of the shares in the Nordic market. Following this failure to launch, Volkswagen snatched up Volvo's stake in Scania in 2000, and Scania sought new opportunities to expand and started working on a successor to their 4 Series. In the spring of 2004, Scania found just the right fit for the launch of their all-new line and introduced their innovative PRT range of rigs, also referred to as the PGRT range, or the LPGRS range, the first freight hauler to be featured in this freshly made model line, was a high forward control cab, called the Scania R Series in March of 2004. This R Series range was released with various versions, all of which were optimized for long haulage. The R Series rigs were then followed by the low forward control cab Scania P Series, launched primarily for locally-based transportation purposes. Continuing on the topic of trucks, Scania added another lorry to their PRT lineup in 2007, as the G-Series medium forward control cab models were introduced. Although the G-Series was largely geared towards long-haul and construction tasks, these trucks were derived directly from the original R-Series rigs. Also in 2007, Volkswagen sought out more stake in the Scania company, increasing their ownership to over 36% in the first quarter alone. Eventually, by January 1st of 2015, Volkswagen had completely bought out the company, controlling 100% of shares in Scania AB to this day. After being acquired by Volkswagen, Scania launched an all-new second generation of trucks in August of 2016 called the S-Series. Sporting the highest cab the Scania company has ever seen, the S-Series also features their first completely flat floor. Subsequent to the S-Series, later in 2017, the L-Series launched as a low-end version of the second-generation S-Series vehicles. These L-Series saw an even lower cab than that produced on the P-Series trucks, and debuted with the intent of distribution and other short-haul duties. 2017 also adopted an all-new XT range of rigs, introduced as Scania's first independently tailor-made construction model. The XT series is Scania's most recently released rig, based on the second-gen semi-tractors. And apart from the standard models, the XTs feature a fully rugged styling, a newly designed heavy-duty bumper, and reinforced ribbed rear-view mirrors. From their humble beginnings building bicycles, to their soaring success seen worldwide as a major truck manufacturer, Scania semis are still sweeping the streets around the globe to this day. That brings you up to date with the history of Scania trucks. Before you leave, make sure you like the video, check out the other videos on our channel, and subscribe. We have finally reached our goal of 25k subscribers, so thank you all so much for your support for the show. Next stop, 50k. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything else you'd like to talk to us about, please be sure to tune into our live podcast, The Chrome Corner, 
Wednesdays at 12 p.m. noon Eastern Standard Time, and join Maddie and Dave as they answer viewers' questions and discuss all things Chrome. If you'd like to stay up to date with the new projects we have coming, please follow us at Jack's Chrome Show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Be sure to buy your big rig the best chrome for your home with some sweet stainless sales on our website at jackschromeshop.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. And remember, guys, if your rig don't shine, you don't know Jack. <laughs>